Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Ready Game Dawn. Today, it's time to begin uh, 3 Prologue. So, this map is a seize map, but you have to rely on a yellow unit to seize. Well, actually, a green unit to seize is even worse. So, Skrimir starts 35 tiles away from the seize point and has 9 movement. So, you'd think, okay. You, he might be able to three turn this map, sorry, four turn this map, but obviously Skrimmer is controlled by an AI and not by a human, and so he doesn't always take the most optimal routes. So like, okay, maybe you five turn this map, but a couple of parts early in the map make it so that Skrimmer just takes terrible routes, and in theory, I think you could five turn this map, but I couldn't find like a way to five turn this map, so might not be reasonably possible, but definitely should be theoretically possible. So, even though I don't control Skrimir, I can still move my units into a good position. So here, I moved Ike really far forward. Ike's actually a Giga Chat on this map, and he has enough strength that he can one-round warriors that spawn from the, that are in the fog. One really annoying thing about this map is that this map is essentially a Fog of War route map, because you need to keep enemies away from Skrimir. And so you'll oftentimes be moving units into fog and hoping not to die. But because Ike is a Giga Chad, he just, you know, one rounds everything and doesn't die. So Skrimir moves two squares, obviously. So now he's 33 squares away from the main objective instead of 35. Wasn't a very good turn one, but... Now we can see that he'll have to at least five turn this map. We get a couple of other uh, green units. So we have Renolf here. Renolf actually is a really, really good unit. Um, and I think my biggest regret of this playthrough so far with Renolf has been like not training Renolf enough. Because I think Renolf could actually be like a top tier combat unit relative to every unit that isn't the Hawk Bros. He has, like, Hawkbro level stats. He just has Cat Gauge, which holds him back quite a bit. So on turn two here, our main objective is to, get, is to move forward and to get Rolf to break help begin the breakthrough on the right side. There are two Ballistas. Um, Shannon could take one and Rolf could take the other. But in this case, we're going to have Rolf take both of them. We're going to have Rolf take one and not take the other at all. And so, the Grail Mercs crew that joins on this map, um, I like to call the 3P Brigade, they're some of the most powerful units in the game overall, and they just all have excellent stats. The only one of them that's, like, kind of bad is Rolf, and even Rolf's actually okay-ish. He's just not great. Riss and Mist are sort of the next two worst ones, people say, but Riss has, like, really nice physics staff, and, again, Mist is also a nice healer. Um, Ike, as you saw, has just been a, you know, it's just an insanely powerful combat unit early with his 23 base speed. Uh, something that's really important about this squad is that a very few of them will be able to double later in the game, or even right now. Because they'll have around 20 speed, and the enemies will have around 20 speed, so everyone's just in this whole nobody doubles anybody thing. The exceptions to that are Ike, who doubles things, and Mia, who doubles things. But... Those units aside, pretty m and uh, Shinon is the other one with 24 speed, also doubles things. But those units aside, like Soren and Boyd or and Oscar and Titania are just not going to be able to double any of the enemies. In a gross playthrough, uh, Boyd and uh, yeah, Boyd and Mio would be much better. Boyd especially can actually double a lot of things later on. Once you get him to 21 and promoted, because he'll have, at, you know, on average 25 speed, but in a gross playthrough, he'll have maxed out at 29 speed. And so he'll be doubling stuff like a madman. In this playthrough, those units aren't necessarily nearly as good as Getri is going to be in this playthrough, because in 0% gross, Getri's weird combination of things is surprisingly useful. 
So one thing you may even have noticed is that Ike has been sort of leading the charge. Uh, this is intentional. Ike has three leadership stars, which also helps him. But also importantly, Ike's 23 speed means that he can just double everything. Or a, at least everything that isn't a Swordmaster. This is in stark contrast to everyone else who couldn't. Um, Ike's three leadership stars is actually the main reason this section of the game is considered fairly easy. Uh, Ike's three leadership stars give you 15 extra hit and 15 extra avoid to every one of your units. And that's insane when you compare Ike to... When you compare, like, these hit rates here, right? I have a terrible hit weapon. This enemy has a pretty okay weapon. But this enemy has 41 hit, whereas I have 100 hit. Um, one other nice cons big consideration is that... Even though I don't... Even though my player units don't always double, the few units that do double hit like trucks. So Shinon and Ike hit like a truck. Um, Mia doesn't really hit like a truck, but she still actually hits pretty hard. Her main problem in these early stages, though, is that she has a Wodao, which is a very weak weapon in this game. It only has 7 might, which, okay, in other Fire Emblem games would be considered a pretty good weapon. But in this game, the base weapon of the game has 14 or 15, is 14 might, the steel Great Lance. And so the 7 might weapon is pretty bad. That'd be like a 3, that's like a slim sword level of weapon in other Fire Emblem games. So here's a Scrimmer's other turn waster. Uh, he moved five tiles this turn instead of the full nine. So already he moved 33 tiles. He, he moved only two tiles on turn one, and then he moved nine tiles on turn two. But now he moves five tiles on turn three, and so he moves only 16 tiles. Uh, the player, the traffic jam over here actually isn't that big a deal, thankfully, because we have to clear it on the next turn. And after clearing this objective, um, by kidding that general, the tiger will be able to one sh will be able to finish off the general, and we get to that the next objective point. One important thing to actually note about the green about the green units, um, tigers have sixteen speed and thirty nine attack. They hit really hard. The cats have twenty nine attack and twenty two speed. But they still hit decently hard. There, I screw up Mia because I didn't memorize my I didn't memorize my strategy for this map. I just kind of, you know, bungled. Mia's supposed to actually take out one of those people, uh, but obviously, you know, I didn't think I wasn't thinking fast. So. Uh, there really isn't much to say. You're just going to watch a bunch of broken units kill weaker enemies. The player unit quality at this point in the game is completely ridiculous. Um, the twelve Of the 12 units we got access to on this map, I would say 11 of them are probably among the best units in the army for the rest of the game. Uh, the only unit being Rolf that's going to be pretty mediocre. Soren's also kind of mediocre and won't be very good as well very late but Soren's actually okay kind of early-ish and then uh, Boyd is another unit who's kind of sketch long term but he's very good early relative to other playable units like Nephany or Braum and so since this whole brigade is just completely bonkers it sort of feels like they just wanted the Grailmarks like the Grailmarks core army to just have this feel of hey you're blitzing through the game against a inferior foe instead of normally where it's instead of like the Dawn Brigade, which is supposed to feel like you're facing off against superior foes. In this part, you're just facing off against inferior foes. So at this point, the two armies have converged into one, and our main objective is actually to get make sure as few enemy units as possible are um, available for Screamer to attack. Because if Scrimmer attacks someone, it can often it can waste another turn. I actually end up 
setting it up so the scrimmer will be exactly nine tiles away from the seize point at the end of turn five. Uh, scrimmer is a terrible uh, general, and this just happens to you. All right, so here's uh, the, the units go north. There are some reinforcement lagoons which will be moving forward, but they don't actually move forward fast enough to help. Now the Glagoos will clear the traffic jam in the way on the way to the boss, and then on turn five, the with the boss's way cleared, we have to kill a bunch of enemies to set up the turn six C's. Scrimmer is actually a really terrible ally in many ways because he seizes only if he doesn't see any enemies in range, and so. One of the main... Th this wrap is actually closer to a route map than it is to a seize map. One of the weird features of it is sort of a linear moving route map. I don't like it because it's really random as to whether or not Scrimmer seizes or you just have to wait forever. It's kind of annoying. And... This map, um, since this is a Fog of War map can't really memorize all the inputs because you just forget all the positions and also importantly it's kind of random where the enemies end up they'll oftentimes be in one of two tiles and you, you have to sort of guess which one of the two tiles they'll be in but thankfully i managed to push through by putting ike on that tile specifically screamer is going to move exactly nine tiles on enemy on uh green unit phase to attack the halberdier since that's the only legal square he can move to uh, that was sort of a really important movement so that screamer would be nine tiles away i am now setting up the uh, final position to get boyd and mia uh into the killing the boss and then i also need to set up a route of the remaining enemies. Runolf, Rolf is now useless, but he tried. Okay. Now on to the enemy phase. So, enemy phase kind of boring. Scrimmer will... The units that sp join late actually have turn order before Scrimmer, but Scrimmer is the first unit in turn order that moves first. That moves... Um, before all the other green units do. And now Renolf will set up a breakthrough on that general. No. Oh, he doesn't. That's actually odd. I thought he would. Okay. Right. I set up so that Ike was set up the breakthrough. Okay. So here we have to do a breakthrough. We have to then hit the hit the boss and then finish him off. Hit the boss with a Kanto unit so that we can finish the boss off. So we have three enemies left to kill. Um, Ike, Titania, and... Mia will be able to get up, set up the kills. Ike killing the first of the generals. And then Titania and Mia can sort of finish off the boss. Right, so since I screwed up the math, apparently I have to do short spear into finishing off the boss, and then we can do a shove, we do a shove train on Shinon to get him to be moved, um, to get him to be moved forward. Unfortunately, since I, like, fully intuitive this clear, I didn't actually, like, set this up. It's sort of annoying to set up for route maps, and so when you fully intuit clear, sometimes you do this.
Anyway, that's three prologue completed in six turns, and I'll see you guys next time for 3-1. Uh,